Okay, there. <laughs> there we go. There, there we, we go. go. Primitive punishment in the building. Hell yeah. Yes. Technology fails again, but we have succeeded to beat you. We've beaten you, technology. Carlos, we appreciate you joining, sir. Uh, my my special guest co-host today is Justin, aka Metallic. Metallic, this is Carlos. Carlos, please, uh, for those that may not know who you are, can you properly introduce yourself? Let me know whereabouts in the world you are at the moment and plug or promote anything you'd like. Yeah, well, I'm Carlos Vasquez. Um, I am the only musician behind Primitive Punishment. This is my solo project. I'm also the guitarist in a band called Dyer, uh, just spelled D-Y-R-E. Um, I live in Greeley, Colorado right now, but um, we play mostly in Denver. So we're mostly involved in, you know, just the Denver scene right now, but we're looking to expand any way we can, really. Toss out uh, all your social media links that everybody can follow the band, as well as Dyer as well. Uh, yeah, so all my social media is going to be just Primitive Punishment. I'm pretty lucky that I got that. No numbers or anything. Um, and uh, Dyer is just going to be Dyer Official on all social media. Does Dyer sound like your solo project as far as just being that oh. kind of what what is what is I mean I'm assuming we'll probably play Dyer here in a little bit, but what is what is their sound compared to uh, Dyer's more of a metalcore kind of a thing. We even have some pretty soft stuff. Um, but yeah, it's nothing nearly close to what this is. Does it bum you out when Dyer does a, a soft song? Cause you seem like a like absolutely slaughter heavy dude as far as <laughs> yeah, like, I'm all into the just ignorantly heavy <laughs> garbage music, you know? <laughs> For sure. And, so, like, I, and I don't really mind playing the softer shit or writing the softer shit because I, I can enjoy pretty much everything. But yeah, I mean, the most fun for me is always going to be the absolute just caveman slam. How do you how do you do the I call it the burble screams? So it's like blah, 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 blah. I can't really I don't know yeah. how to describe it, but how do you do that with like I've never heard that sound before until I heard I heard uh, your band. Um, so I, the, everyone does it kind of differently. Um, the person that I kind of heard it first from was a band called Guttalax. And this guy, he does it in a way that I just, I couldn't even get close to it, but that's the first time I heard it done. And, um, I do it inhale. That's the only, um, vocal that I do inhale. Cause I don't really know if I could get that deep exhale. Okay. So it's, yeah, it's like a... Just like a cricket noise. <laughs> that is interesting. Uh, Cody, Cody in chat wants to know. Uh, just toss out like two or three of your favorite slam bands. Um, definitely the ones that inspire me. Necrotic Gore Beast. It's got to be probably my number one. And um, Peeling Flesh. That sounds brutal. <laughs> let's check out. Let's check out uh, a song from Prim Primitive Punishment. Is there one that you'd like us? You'd prefer that we start off with? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and play some anything from my new one. If you want to play that first song, that's cool. That was the one that I, uh, that kind of inspired me to even make a new EP. So crudely lobotomized. Here we go. Hanging out with Permanent Punishment. If you guys are feeling the music while we're jamming it, please, please, please support him. Hit that follow button. That'd be nasty. It is slightly hard to understand what you're saying. Like, have you shown your parents this music? And they were like, oh, I can, I can understand every single word. So basically, that's uh, that's almost unless I show it to somebody who is like distinctly into like grindcore or slam, they always say like, "What does that logo say?" or "What are you even saying?" <laughs> or <laughs> so I mean, I get it's a super super niche style, you know, but it's kind of it's really just a passion project for me, something I just kind of wanted to have fun with. I don't take it really all that seriously, and I think that's kind of evident you know i have a song about swamp ass even on my new one <laughs> so like it's really it. just fun. i could dig <laughs> it for sure metallic what's a, a question or two that you have for carlos what do you use to produce with um i am just using reason right now so i'm and then i get my guitar tones from stl tone hub okay 
Yeah, uh, and so uh, I don't actually have a bass guitar or like a VST bass, so I just created a bass tone like from scratch. For that's all cool. This stuff. So you just MIDI yeah. MIDI the whole thing. Yeah, for the bass, yeah, and for the drums, obviously. That some of the drums are, I think, pretty much impossible to play. Oh yeah, <laughs> you can tell just by hearing it. I was like, God, yeah. those are all MIDI drums. Yeah, yeah, and it's. <laughs> It's based, absolutely ridiculous. Based on the stuff I'm seeing in your background, you're clearly a huge horror film fan. What? Yes. What yes. is uh, the scariest movie? And maybe it was when you were younger, because a lot of times it's stuff like that. We've seen it all. It doesn't scare us as much. But what is the movie that scared you when you were younger? Okay, I've got, I've got two. Into getting scared. <laughs> Um, the first one I saw was Jaws. Jaws gave me nightmares as a kid for years. Um, the second one is a movie called When Darkness Falls. Oh, yeah, I remember that movie. It's about the Tooth Fairy. Yeah, it, it, oh, it, that movie really, really messed well, me up. I gotta write this one kid. down. When Darkness Falls. I forgot all that, about that, that movie. That has yeah. to go on the Discord oh, tonight. Dude, Jaws scared me so much as a little kid. I wouldn't even go swimming in the deep end of my pool for like a small. I, I still, even still, <laughs> like if I'm in a pool and I think about like, you know, something being underneath me, it freaks me out. You're like, I'm out. I'm out. I'm just going to tan. Yeah. Instead. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> if you were if you were to uh, just say just say you had like a rolodex of every single like deathcore screamer or grindcore screamer in in the, in a book and they you, they would all say yay who's the one person that you're hitting up to jump on as a feature for a feature for primitive punishment it would be the vocalist there it's not their current vocalist but it was the vocalist that uh sang for a band called analepsy or unalepsy i'm not really sure how you pronounce it because um they're european but uh, on their second album, it's called Atrocities from Beyond. And that vocalist, it's some of the most powerful vocals I've ever heard. Hell yeah. I've never heard of that artist. I think Analepsy sounds a little funnier. So we'll just go with that one. But um... <laughs> Carlos, let's do a little trivia before we play a second song uh, from, from Primitive, Primitive Punishment. But I want to, you get to pick the trivia topic. What movie or TV show? I think it's easier if you go movie. Uh, have you seen the most where if I ask you trivia about this, you will not get stumped? First, did you bring hot sauce? Uh, I I got some in the fridge. Excellent. Excellent. Because if you're down and I stump you, you have to take a swig of hot sauce. I'll do one too, whether you get it right or not. I'll still, right. I'll, I'll join you. But um, first, first I'll let you go grab it. But what movie do you know the most about? I'll join too. I know the most about. Um... Give me something from. Give me something from Scream. First, okay, one of the Scream series, or specifically the first one. Um, any from the first three movies. Gotcha. Good choice. Let's do Brain Purge while we're looking up trivia. Oh yeah, we're gonna grab my hot All right, what what you got there? What sauce you got for me? Show me what I got right now. I got Cholula. That'll work. I'm going to go a little bit hotter than that and go Mount Fiji Magma Hot Sauce. And it's like very dark in color. Yeah, I don't have anything crazy hot with me right now. No worries. I got, fa I got Famous Dave's Barbecue Sauce Devil's Pit. So. It's a little, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give gift you a hot sauce next time I see you, Metallic. So you have one. You have, you, you have to. I got I more than one. enough to, to give you one. <laughs> All right. One. Your Scream yeah, good one. 3 trivia. <laughs> In Scream 3, what is hidden inside Dewey's copy of the book, The Woodsboro Murders? What was hidden inside Dewey's copy? Do you recall what was inside the book? Oh, man. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna recall. We got him. Gotcha, bitch. <laughs> Carlos, cheers. I'll join you. It was actually an engagement ring. Okay. 
It was the engagement ring, I think, probably for Gale, I'm imagining. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Well, let's check out, let's check out Dyer. Is this the correct one right here? That's it. Let's go. Oh, we're already following. That's awesome. Oh, oh, yeah. Hell yeah, let's oh, yeah. go. Let's go with Neil. And then um, if you want to hear any of our softer stuff, we have a song called Soulless that you'll want to play. Okay. Carlos, what's what's a absolutely terrible everything went wrong at this show for you? It happens to every band where they have a, every band has a worst show. This was the worst show you played in any band you've ever been in. Everything went wrong. We've had a couple of them. Um, <laughs> we, play, we play a lot at this place called uh, Trailside Saloon in Thornton, Colorado, which is just a little suburb outside Denver. And um, it's kind of like a it's like kind of a biker bar kind of a place, but they have a lot of bands that play there and. Everything that can go wrong has go wrong in that venue for us. <laughs> um, we've broken drum heads. We've had guitar signals go out. We've had mics go out. <laughs> we've gotten lost in songs. Did the biker crowd all... enjoy the music though? Like while it was still, while it was going smooth? Honestly, I think for the most part, trail size where we've had our best reaction and our best crowds. Interesting. Hell yeah. I mean, everyone has yeah. everyone has a bad show, so I hear all kinds of dif different experiences and stories. Yeah, we, we've definitely had our fair share, but for the most part, like people really like to throw down in Colorado. We have a pretty decent scene. Excellent. 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 Metallic, do you have another question for Carlos? What do you? What do you? Uh, what was your earliest experience in music? Earliest experience? Well, I guess I started playing the piano when I was like, probably like six, and I just kept playing throughout my whole life. And then um, after high school, I went to a performing arts college, and I went on tour with them for six months. And so, I mean, music's kind of always been a part of my life somehow. Six months? But, How, where did the tour go outside of the U.S.? Uh, there were tours that went outside of the U.S. I toured on two different U.S. tours. So I went one that was primarily West Coast, Southern California, and a little bit in Arizona. And then I went on another kind of Midwest tour that was a lot in Nebraska, some Colorado, and then back to the West Coast. Hell yeah, very cool. Yeah. What's a, what's a style or, or genre of music that we would not expect that you listen to? Ooh, um i like to listen to a lot of i like i like orchestral jazz a lot um if you've ever heard of a composer his name's sun Ra. oh that does sound familiar oh phenomenal some of the most phenomenal jazz i've ever heard sun Ra. Um, i like i mean i really there's not a lot of stuff i don't like really I, I don't listen to a lot of country music i like old country music though Scream 3 trivia round two. In Scream 3, where was Jennifer hiding when she got killed? Was she behind the shower curtain? She was not. She was behind something. I'll give you one more guess. Uh, oh, shit. The broken chair I almost died. <laughs> um shit it's been so long since I've seen the third one I don't I couldn't tell you we got him again <laughs> behind a two way mirror is the answer she's being chased by the killer she ends up in a closet when she fell she fell into a secret passage that led her behind the two way mirror where she is stabbed to death see I barely even remember that anyway so there's no way I would have gotten that one you gave me you gave me the choice of doing the first three, so I went with the one that I thought I know, you would know I, the least. I, I didn't have picked the scream, man. I thought I, I thought I'd get it. No worries. You said you said Soulless is the slower one. That's our softer one, yeah. We gotta check out Soulless. Then we get time for a couple more questions after that. Yeah, is this a single? Yeah. Dude, that that is that is catchy as hell right there.
And I'd already yeah. I'd already had hearted it before. Like I fell in love with it another day and forgot all about it. Oh, nice! Hell yeah! As well as Snake Eyes, it appears. Oh, dope! Nice. So yeah, we've. I think we might have been on the show like a long time ago, maybe. Possibly, we play a lot of artists on here. We probably play like eighty to hundred a day. Some sometimes they some of them blur together, yeah. and I forget. I forget about all the all yep. the goodies that I discovered back in the day. Metallic. Yeah. What is your final question for Carlos? Carlos, I have two final questions for you after that. Okay. What kind of instruments do you prefer using? Because you like, said you play it, piano. It, yeah. Uh, well, I guess for piano, I've never actually owned a nice, like a super, super nice, like real piano. I learned on... You know, for the first till I was maybe 13, I learned on this tiny little, you know, maybe 32 key thing. And then my parents got me a full size electronic like Casio keyboard. Um, but I mean, if I had to, you know, pick an actual piano to play, I'd pick probably a Yamaha Baby Grand. Um, as far as guitars, though, I've always been a Schecter player for most of my life, but I'm just now kind of transitioning to ESP. I just got this this guy. Nice. Yeah, nice. she's very pretty. Very pretty. Very. <laughs> yeah. So now transitioning over to ESP. Who is? The if there was a battle royale gauntlet of every single horror character ever, who is the last horror character standing? Victor Crowley. Victor Crowley. Oh, good call. That's uh the dude that uh that uh Kane plays, right? Yeah, yeah, Kane Hodder. Yeah, dude, Kane Hodder. I've tried to meet him twice, and both times he he like canceled his horror con appearance. That those particular ones, yeah. both times. What and the, the same at the same cons, my Holy Grail autograph that I still don't have, which I could get off the internet, but it's not the same. I got to see it actually be signed. Is uh, is Tobin Bell from from Jigsaw uh, and yeah. Saw? Uh, he's canceled yeah, also like almost every time I've tried to meet him. I was like, damn it. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, just to have, just to even meet that guy would be really amazing. I don't think I've ever seen him in anything else, which is also kind of adds to the mystery of that guy. Right. I've seen him in like one or two other things, but it wasn't like a scary movie. It's just like a random small, like two minute role. And I don't even remember what it was, but it wasn't like a scary movie. Uh, this is a final serious question. We appreciate your time, Carlos. What is, it's a two part question. You can answer one or the other or both. It's up to you. What is a piece of musical advice? Somebody in the industry has given you at some point in your career that kind of just made you take your career a little bit more seriously or a terrible mistake you made early on that you don't want a band that's just starting out to make? Um, I guess, honestly, the really the best piece of advice I think I ever got was probably in my performing arts school. And that it was really taught to us in the light of auditioning for musical theater, but I think it's applicable really for bands. And that's to get used to rejection, but to never let rejection like slow down your progress. Ooh, well said. And, like to to you know expect a lot of no's. You know you can't really go in expecting everyone's going to ex like say, "Wow, you're the greatest thing ever," because you obviously think it sounds like the greatest thing ever because you wrote it. And but you have to really you know go into it humble and expecting a lot of no's and just take it how it goes and I, I think that's really kind of helped me be to do it without the fear of disappointment and really just doing it because I like making music hell yeah I think that's fantastic advice really uh, are you willing to answer the second part a terrible mistake you made earlier on in your career it doesn't have to be a show gig or anything just something that you were like oh mom this is all I need is this one thing and it doesn't solve anything, um, and you waste the money. Could have spent it here. Any any scenario. I I would say your gear doesn't mean as much as you think it does. This your sound comes a lot go, comes ninety percent from you. Also well said, really good advice on both ends, Carlos. We appreciate your time, brother. Uh, thank, thank you, thank you so yeah, much really for hanging out. That. 
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep playing Primitive Punishment because you're a supporter of ours, and we appreciate your support as well as Dire, which I I'm rekindling my Dire love all of a sudden today. I love it. Hell yeah, man. Dude, you're awesome, brother. Have a fantastic evening. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah. Primitive Thank Punishment. Give me a hell yeah. And Dire. Later, brother. Cheers. <laughs>